Hey guys, it's Mon and Christina from, from Our Rich, Rich Journey. Journey. Today we're talking about ETFs versus index funds because right now is a great time to be investing in the stock market. Now with the recent drops in the stock market and the volatility in the stock market, there have been people that have been sitting on the sidelines waiting for this opportunity to invest in the stock market with these dips. But there's also great opportunities to invest in the stock market when the stock market is doing well. And that's because long-term investing should be the goal. When you put your money in the stock market, you want to put it in for long-term growth. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between ETFs and index funds, why you would invest in one over the other, what we're invested in, our strratege for buying one over the other. And we're also going to share Vanguard, Schwab and Fidelity total stock market index funds and their ETF equivalents. So this is your catch all video when it comes to ETFs versus index funds. We are putting everything into this video. So if you've been watching our channel, you know that we reached financial independence and we retired at age 39. And our channel is all about making money, saving money and investing money on the road to financial independence and retiring early. So for the investing part of our channel, we talk a lot about our portfolio. And we also share that the majority of our portfolio is made up of a total stock market index fund, but we also have an ETF equivalent. So we also invest in a total stock market ETF. And a lot of people ask us why we're investing in the same thing. Why do we have a total stock market index fund and a total stock market ETF? So we made this video to address that question. But let's get into the core of this this video. Let's start out by explaining the difference between an ETF and an index fund. Now an ETF is a fund that holds stocks, bonds and other securities and it's traded on a stock exchange. And many ETFs are designed to track a specific index, for example, the S&P 500. But there are also several other types of ETFs. For example, there's bond ETFs, currency ETFs and sector ETFs that invest in certain sectors like technology, energy and healthcare. And those are just a few of the different types of ETFs. Now, index funds, on the other hand, are a type of mutual fund, except that they're not actively managed. And just like ETFs, index funds invest in bonds, stocks, and other securities. And index funds are designed to track a particular index. Now, a big difference between an ETF and an index fund is how they are traded. You see, ETFs trade like ordinary stocks, meaning they are on a stock exchange and you can buy and sell them throughout the day for whatever price they are going for. So with ETFs, the price fluctuate throughout the day. Now, just like an ETF, you can put an order in for an index fund any time throughout the day. But here's the catch. The price for the index fund isn't set until the close of the market. And this is a big point. You see with ETFs, you are buying ETFs in real time. Whatever that price is, when the market is open, that's the price you pay for that ETF. Index funds, on the other hand, you don't know the actual price of the index fund until the following day or later on that evening. You see with index funds, they don't calculate that price until the market closes. Now, another difference between ETFs and index funds is whether or not you can purchase them as fractional shares. And this really depends on the brokerage company that you're buying your ETFs with. Now, a fractional share is just what it sounds like. It's buying a portion or a fraction of an equity like an ETF or an index fund. And for us, we invest with Vanguard. And for Vanguard, they do not allow fractional share purchases of ETFs other than the automatic reinvestments of dividends. But with index funds, you can purchase fractional shares. So I'll give you an example of how it works with us as investors with Vanguard. If we want to buy an ETF and the ETF share price is $125, we have to pay the whole $125 for that share. We can't pay, for example, $75 and get a portion of it. But with index funds, once you put in the minimum requirements for that particular index fund, you can invest any amount of money you want after that. Now that's for Vanguard and that's what we invest with for our ETFs and our index funds, but Fidelity is very different. Fidelity allows for fractional shares for its ETFs and it even allows for fractional shares for individual stocks. Now, if you invest in Schwab in October, 2019, they announced that they have plans to allow for fractional share purchases of ETFs. It hasn't happened yet, but it looks like they're gearing towards that. Now we mentioned Vanguard, Fidelity and Schwab because those are the top three low cost brokerage firms that are most popular within the fire community. But if you invest with someone else, check with them to see if they are offering fractional shares of ETFs. 
So another difference between ETFs and index funds is their minimum investment requirements. Now ETFs don't have a minimum investment per se because they're traded just like stocks. So if you want to purchase an ETF, you just have to buy a share of that ETF. But with index funds, some brokerage firms require a minimum investment to get started in investing with index funds. So now that we've talked about the differences, let's apply those differences to your buying strategy of the two. If you are worried about price, if you want to have control over the price you pay, you should be looking at ETFs because ETFs allow you to buy them at a specific price throughout the day. And some people like to have control over the price they're paying for their investments. And this really comes into play when the stock market is having very large jumps throughout the day. You see, with an ETF, you can buy at a specific price. But with an index fund, if you recall what we said earlier, you don't know the price you're paying until after the market closes and that brokerage company has calculated the price of that index fund. So let's say you go to buy your index fund during the day and you think the price is down, but at the last minute, at the end of the day, the price shoots back up and it's higher than what you thought you were going to be buying it for. This is where the control comes into play and this is why some people prefer to invest in ETFs. And another factor that people consider when they're thinking about investing in an ETF versus an index fund are the fractional shares. Now, all index funds can be purchased as a fractional share, which means you can also set up automated investments when you're investing in index funds. But if you have to buy a full share of an ETF, you cannot automate your investments into ETFs. Now, if you watch our videos, we talk a lot about the power of automation. We think that people that automate their investments are far more successful. And so I want to go back to the example of thinking you have more control by investing in ETFs. Yes, you have more control, but you have the tendency to time the market when you're investing in ETFs. You see, when you invest in index funds, you set up your automatic investments and you do not worry about what the market is doing because you are automatically buying. You don't have that tendency to want to time the market. So the third thing you want to think about when you're choosing between an ETF and an index fund is whether or not there are minimum investment requirements. We invest in the total stock market index fund with Vanguard. The minimum requirement is $3,000. And with an ETF equivalent, the minimum requirement is just the cost of the share. So if you're investing with Vanguard, it's more feasible if you're a new investor or you don't have a lot of money to invest with an ETF to get started versus an index fund. But that's only if you're investing with Vanguard. You see, Fidelity and Charles Schwab are offering no minimum investments in index funds. And this is a great thing because it allows someone to get started with literally a dollar. You can start investing in the stock market with a dollar. So there's no excuses when it comes to investing in index funds because however little money you have or however much money you have with index funds, you can start investing right away. So once you've taken into account control of your investments, fractional share purchases and automated investments, and minimum requirements, you also want to take into account the cost and the expense ratios on ETFs and index funds. Now, if you're looking at an ETF and its equivalent index fund for a particular brokerage, compare those expense ratios. Both of them are likely going to be low, but one may be lower than the other, and that may prompt you to buy the lower one instead of the higher one. So those are the factors that you want to consider when you're deciding whether to invest in an ETF or an index fund. And those are the factors that we considered. So with that being said, we want to share with you what we actually invest in. And like we said, we invest in Vanguard. We invest in the total stock market index fund with Vanguard, which is VTSAX. And we also invest in the ETF version, the total stock market ETF, which is VTI. Now on the surface, it may seem strange that we are investing in an index fund and the ETF equivalent, but this boils down to our strategy. You see, our strategy takes into account our own personal situation. And so this is how we do it. Each month, we automated our investments into VTSAX. That was our autopilot investing. On the other hand, with our ETFs, whenever we came into a lump sum of money, we immediately put it into the ETF. You see, whenever we made money from our side hustles, whenever we sold real estate, whenever we had this large lump of cash, the idea was we would put it into ETS. And that is what we did on our journey. 
Now, one of the big reasons why we liked to keep the two separated, have our salary money in VTSAX and our side hustle money in VTI was to stay motivated on our journey. You see, every dollar we put into VTI, we knew that that was side hustle money. We knew that that was money that we created outside of our nine to five. And that's what kept us motivated on our financial independence journey. To check our brokerage account and to see VTI growing because of the sweat and tears that we put <laughs> from our side hustles go into that account. So if you watch our channel, you know that we were federal government employees and we were not able to reach financial independence without these side hustles. So having our money grow in VTI and having that motivation by seeing that money grow was great for us on the road to financial independence. So those are our reasons for investing in an index fund and an equivalent ETF, but that is with Vanguard. Now, if you're interested in investing in Vanguard or Schwab or Fidelity, there's totally different index funds and ETFs that you can invest in. So in this part of the video, we wanna go through the different types of ETFs and equivalent index funds with Vanguard, Schwab, and Fidelity. Now we already mentioned Vanguard's total stock market index fund, which is VTSAX, and its equivalent ETF is VTI. Vanguard also has an S&P 500 index fund, which mimics the S&P 500, and that's VFIAX, and its ETF equivalent is VOO. Now Schwab's total stock market index fund is SWTSX, and its ETF equivalent is SCHB. And Schwab's S&P 500 index fund is SWPPX, its ETF equivalent is SCHX. Fidelity has a zero expense ratio total stock market index fund. It's called FZROX. It also has an S&P 500 index fund called VXAIX. Now what's unique about Fidelity is that they don't have an ETF equivalent for their total stock market index fund or their S&P 500 index fund, but they do offer commission-free trades of ETFs. So you can buy Vanguard's VTI or Vanguard's VOO at Fidelity and accomplish the same thing. So those are the key things to keep in mind when you're thinking about investing in ETFs and in index funds. But another thing that you always wanna keep in mind and which we stress in all of our investment videos is that you want to remain consistent and you want to invest in the long term. Always think about that when you're making your investment decisions. And remember, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and join, join the, the journey. journey.